Daily Tech News Show is made possible by its listeners. Thanks to all of you, including High Tech Oki, Chris Zaragoza, Jim Hart, and new patrons over the long weekend, Didi for you, Fango, Joe, and OJ. Yay! Thanks to all of you. Welcome, new patrons. On this episode of DTNS, why it's still not likely that advertisers are listening to you through your phones, Mike. Canva prices skyrocket, and there's still no evidence that cell phones cause brain cancer. Hooray! Yay! This is the Daily Tech News for Tuesday, September 3rd, 2024. In a powerless neighborhood in Los Angeles, I'm Tom Merritt. And thankfully, from a powerful uh, neighborhood at Studio Animal House, I'm Sarah Lane. And uh, I'm just sweltering in high heat, and I'm the show's producer. Roger, Roger refuses to use power to save money, so he's well, really... Well, yeah. yeah. He, says, also, he says, screw both of you, I'm just hot. Yeah. 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 My AC doesn't work if it's too hot outside. Um, that is, it, that's not a problem. That's not, it's supposed to, yeah, I was going to yes. say, it's supposed to yes. do the opposite. Um, wow. yeah, uh, we lost power about an hour ago. I called, uh, LADWP and they're like, hmm, first we've heard of it. I'm like, well, <laughs> you might want to get someone on that. Um, uh, but thankfully I have an EcoFlow, uh, portable backup battery. It says I can do about 13 hours on this setup. So minimal setup, but, uh, you know, audio folks, you, you shouldn't hear any difference. Same mic, same mixer, all of that. Uh, you sound we'll great. You sound oh, yeah, great. Thanks. No, keep your fingers crossed while Same we start. Same old Tom. Same <laughs> old Tom. With the quick hits. Nikkei Asia sources say that Apple will supply OLED screens for the next version of the iPhone SE from China's BOE Technology Group and South Korea's LG Display. Apple will no longer buy LCD screens, reportedly, from Japan's Sharp and JDI. The iPhone SE was the last iPhone to be made with LCD screens. Mac Rumors believes production of OLED iPhone SEs will begin next month for release in early 2025. So not going to happen this fall, but early next year. The SE is popular as the bargain phone in Apple's line, and a switch to OLED screens would make it even more attractive. It's also expected to get a bigger screen and support Apple intelligence. The company is not expected to announce the iPhone SE at its September 9th event. Yeah, it's coming next year. A Financial Times article detailing performance issues with Huawei's AI chips says that uh, Huawei is uh, not doing so good at it. Huawei is one of the Chinese companies attempting to develop an alternative to NVIDIA's AI chips which are restricted from being sold to China. Huawei's Ascend chips are a popular alternative domestically in China, but multiple engineers told FT that they suffer from, quote, stability issues, slower interchip connectivity, and inferior software. In fact, a lot of engineers, including some that FT say work at Huawei, complained about poor documentation specifically related to that software. In other words, the software might be able to do some of this, but we can't tell how. There are also supply concerns constraints uh, because the U.S. is not only restricting selling a lot of these chips to China, but restricting using U.S.-based intellectual property in manufacturing tools to be sold to Chinese for domestic production. Meanwhile, Bloomberg reports that sales for semiconductor chips rose faster in North and South America than they did in China and Asia Pacific, excluding Japan. You're like, wow, well, what happens if you add Japan? It would go down because chip sales fell in Japan by a couple of percentage points, and they fell quite a bit in Europe. Former HP executive Mike Lynch died August 19th in a boating accident near Sicily. HP had been suing Lynch for accounting improprieties and other issues at the time of his death. Now the company says it will continue to pursue the case with Lynch's estate. Hey, remember last week when DeskModder found indications in a preview build of Windows 11 that you could uninstall Microsoft Recall? Uh, <laughs> turns out that was a bug. Uh, Microsoft says that it was incorrectly listed as an option under the Turn Windows Features on and off dialog and control panel. Uh, no word on if that incorrect listing was permanent. In other words, are they going to bring it back? They're like, it wasn't supposed to be there this time. Verge suspects that Microsoft might require that option in the EU to comply with the Digital Markets Act. So maybe that's why it existed at all. And they were just 
trying to figure out how to you know slice it up so only Europeans see it. Uh, anyway, Microsoft says changes are still being made to recall, and it is on track to officially be ready for Windows insiders to test in October. Transport for London, which oversees transit in the metropolis, is investigating an ongoing cybersecurity incident. The attack hasn't affected its services, but TfL does not believe sensitive information has been accessed either. It's working with the National Crime Agency and the National Cybersecurity Center to combat the intrusion. Last December, uh, astute and regular Daily Tech News Show uh, listeners might recall a company called MindSift was promising clients it could target users based on voice data. It's made a lot of headlines. A lot of people now, because they just saw the headline, believe that, in fact, uh, Instagram is listening to me when it shows me these ads. But it was questionable, if you remember our discussion, whether it could actually deliver on the promise. All we saw was its claims. Uh, it was never demonstrated to be a valid promise by anyone. It's possible that it was in fact gathering voice data from a few apps, apps that might ask for permission to get that, and then inattentive users or users who don't care that much let it have that permission. Uh, but there are restrictions in iOS and Android that would make it easy to tell when apps were doing this. Uh, and we didn't see any security researchers say, yeah, everybody's violating this, et cetera, et cetera. Well, the story is back again. That's why we're talking about it today. Uh, 404 Media reports that CMG, the company used by MindSift to provide the data, is still pitching its active listening technology and in its materials claimed that Google, Facebook, and Amazon were all clients. Google removed CMG as a listed partner as soon as 404 Media contacted them. Meta said it's reviewing CMG to see if it's actually violating its terms of service. In other words, Meta said, if it is using Facebook to listen to people, that's a violation and we're not going to allow that. And Amazon says... We don't know who this is. That's that's not a direct quote, but they said they never worked with CMG. So they're they're like, we're not removing them as a client because they never were a client. Uh, they are not telling the truth when they say they worked with us. I imagine there's some ways you there's always ways you can be like, well, yeah, we didn't work with Amazon directly, but we worked with, you know, something related to Amazon or aid we stored something on AWS. Who knows? Uh, but the reason we're bringing this up again today uh, is to remind people that you can claim anything and you can even make it technically true. But that's not that doesn't mean it works the way everybody thinks it works. Yeah, I mean, I think I, I think Amazon saying we have not worked with this company. So like, just <laughs> leave us out of this conversation. Google saying, well, OK, we won't work with them anymore if we ever did. Meta saying, let's let's figure out what's going on. If all of these large companies were just lying, that's possible, but that's not probable. Uh, the companies either, you know, were working with uh, CMG or Mindsef, uh, were some combination of both, um, without uh, total knowledge of what was going on. What I think is mo more important is the this claim that, and this speaks to lots of, you know, conspiracy theories of like, you know, I told Tom about this vacuum cleaner I wanted to buy yesterday. I wasn't on my phone. We weren't texting. It was all voice. And now I'm getting ads for this. You know, they're listening to us 100% of the time. People are worried about this. A company claiming that they are uh, capable of, of doing this, you know, to some extent, um, that is going to scare a lot of people or at least raise some eyebrows. I don't think that that's what's going on here. I think this is a company saying, look what we can do. And really, it's like a settings thing in a few apps. Yeah. Yeah, no, ex ex exactly. Uh, several thoughts come to mind. Uh, one is that, uh, like, like, like you were saying, Sarah, there are a lot of explanations for how they know stuff about you that seem like a magic trick, right? Like, oh, I was just thinking about vacuum cleaners and a vacuum cleaner ad showed up. But if you really track it down, it's because you actually did a search or your profile is such that they know, you know, this person's likely to need a vacuum cleaner and you never right. notice the opposite stuff. You never get suspicious when an ad shows up that is irrelevant to you, right? They're yeah, trying to do like, these things all the time. 
Yeah, exactly. You scroll on past and you think nothing of it. So it's only the ones that that hit that make you suspicious. Uh, so keep that in mind. Uh, there's a selection bias going on. Also, it is funny to me that a lot of, not you, of course, listening right now, but a lot of the same people who are like, marketers are inept. They can't do anything right. They're always targeting me with the same ads after I bought something. Think that those same marketers are able to surreptitiously listen to your conversations, process them, and target you specifically on exactly the stuff you're talking about. We were just mentioning last week uh, that we can't get even get our voice assistants to always respond appropriately to what we say. And you think this marketing company is going to have perfect surreptitious right uh, and speech that, to like text. google facebook amazon they're all in on it you know they're just listening all the time i mean for the record there are certain uh devices and or services that are designed to listen to you all the time and you can opt in or out of those things yeah my you know my my smart home speakers are designed to listen to me you know they're waiting for my prompt i'm okay with that I don't yeah. have to be okay with it. You know, that that's a choice that you make. Uh, so yeah, the the whole kind of they're they've been listening to you this entire time. Um, that would <laughs> listen, if 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 that was really going on, I, you know, I will I will eat My ads crow. should be a lot better. <laughs> that, 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 that's what I think. Indeed. Right. Because yeah. my ads are all about things that I bought last week. Yeah, so. yeah. I, I would I would uh, keep keep in mind when you see these kinds of claims uh, that while it's not impossible uh, that this kind of thing could happen, it, it is totally possible. Uh, look for sources that are security researchers. Look for bleeping computer to report on it. Look for Krebs on security to report on it. Look for search engine land even to report on it. Uh, if you're only seeing it in tabloids, Hold off on believing it would would be uh, yeah. would be my advice. There's yeah. lots of ways these these marketers could legally claim that they're doing this. You know, like I said, there could be three apps out there that have a total of a hundred users, and those users have said, "Yeah, sure, listen to me all the time. I don't care because there's people like that." And then they could say, "We have a data set of you know possible customers who allow us to listen and, and record with their stuff." You. Yeah, yeah. But the but those customers would have to. They would either have to say yes to the prompts on Android and iOS, or uh, this marketing company would have had to be one of the cleverest uh, developers in the world to be able to get around the operating system safeguards against this. And again, I'm not saying that's impossible. That's when I look to the security world and go, hey, are you finding anybody that, that's that clever that's gotten around it? And I haven't seen anybody say yes yet, so I'm, I'm holding off on that. All right. Well, let's talk about price hikes. Uh, who oh, likes price hikes? Everyone. Kind of nobody. Inflation, yeah. <laughs> it depends <laughs> on if you're the company or the consumer, very different responses. Software True. design company Canva is increasing its prices. This happens sometimes. What's getting increased attention, though, is that the price hikes are going up quite a bit for certain users. And some of those users say those price hikes are egregious. They were only notified by email. They feel like uh, Canva should have explained this a little bit better. So Canva, uh, which uh, is you know a design company, continues to roll out uh, new features, generative AI features, image generation, background expansion, other items. And Canva says these new tools justify the price hike. You know, it, it, it's it's it's. You could liken it to something like Creative Cloud, where, you know, it gets better and therefore you pay more. Well, a lot of users say, no, Canva, we were using Canva specifically to not be that subscription service. And um, and in particular, there are quite a few, at least uh, individual uh, uh, artists or people who work on very small teams saying, what you're the price hike is assuming that we've got this big team that's going to make use of all these new tools and we don't want them. Yeah. I I would remind people that Canva still has a free tier. So this is more about businesses and teams than it is about the actual uh the the actual folks that are, you know, doing the uh, uh doing the individual plans and i feel like a lot of times these these situations have been positioned as if 
they are targeting the individuals with a price hike. Uh, that's not to say that if you're a small business that this isn't a big increase in expense. But I mean, how does it compare to Adobe? I, I know it's a huge increase. Uh, is it still cheaper? Yes, it is. I mean, it, yeah. So <laughs> at the time at the time of this recording, you know, because I I am a Creative Suite user, you know, and I pick and choose depending on what I need to do. So here here's the deal. So Canva Teams users, some of them um, are reporting increases from one hundred twenty dollars per year. Maybe that's you know maybe you can afford that. Maybe that's that's still stretching, you know, but you can do that for up to five users increasing to $500 per year. Now, if that were me, I'd say, well, I can't do this anymore. You know, I can't, I mean, this is not even like a twofold increase. It, it's a huge increase. Um, there's some discounts that can bring the price down. You know, there's, there's a variety of, of plans that are apparently being offered to Canva subscribers. Um, Canva also has some users that you know were grandfathered in at a, a lower uh, tier uh, because they were you know uh, part of the first wave of users. Some of those users are very upset because that seems to be going away, um, uh, starting as early as this month. Um, <laughs> being grandfathered into certain plans and then kick getting kicked off of them, I can understand that. Um, but yeah, like you mentioned. Canva does offer a free tier. You can use the service and do some pretty great things for no money at all, as many services offer. There are also some pro and enterprise users who say, we didn't get the email about a price increase. So I think that's where a lot of this is going a little sideways. There is uh, a messaging problem from the company um, because some people are like, I just got an email about this. What the heck? Well, it's like, well, how else would the company tell you about it? That's usually, you know, first, first course of that, action. Yeah. That's one of those things where, where you can, you can do nothing right if people are mad at you. And I totally get the frustration of having your, your price increased, especially 300%. That's quite a lot to yeah, try to swallow no, at once. That, that, yeah. But it, it wouldn't have mattered how Canva communicated it. It would have been bad. I can't believe they just made an announcement in the press. I can't believe they just emailed me. I can't believe they visited me at my home and annoyed me by, by personally yeah. informing me. Knocking like, on my door telling yeah. me about that. Yeah, exactly. Like the, the whole point is that if you are an individual or a small team, this seems to affect you the worst. Um, or at least those are, you know, the most vocal opponents of this saying, you know, Canva, this is why we went with you instead of Adobe. You're seeing a lot of the comparisons between the two right now. And, you know, <laughs> and other people saying, what did you expect? I mean, subscription models are, you know, where it's at. And Canva is offering you more features for a, a a bundle that the company feels is fair. Now, it uh, I don't think it's fair for everybody, but the company feels like that's the customer that we want to attract in the future. I don't know that they're wrong here. Yeah, it is. It is unfortunately for people who are upset, <laughs> one of those situations where it's like, so are you going to quit? and pay more for Adobe or just not use a design tool? Or is there an opportunity for someone else to come in and undercut Canva? Uh, and that would be the thing I would ask if, uh, of anybody who's affected by this. Did you find a cheaper alternative? Because that's how it's supposed to work is somebody's like, well, shoot, if Canva's raising their prices and going all businessy and enterprising and following down the Adobe path, maybe we can get some new customers. And maybe there's a there's a great alternative out there to Canva that's, that's cheaper now. Um, let us know. Feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. In fact, if you have feedback about anything that gets brought up on the show, you can get in touch with us all kinds of ways, not even just email, but on the social networks. We are at DTNS show on X and Mastodon. Uh, our Mastodon server is mstdn.social. We're at Daily Tech News Show on TikTok and at DTNS Picks. That's at DTNS PIX on Instagram and threads. Years and years ago on CNET's Buzz Out Loud, we would debate the efficacy of research into whether cell phones contributed to cancer. Uh, one of the big fears since cell phones took off in the late 90s has been, uh, if I hold this phone up to my head, what is it doing to my brain? What is it doing to my skull? What is it doing to my neck, etc.? There was no evidence back then in the 2000s 
Uh, but we had to admit that cell phone usage was pretty new. Not everybody had a cell phone back then. In fact, the majority of people didn't have a cell phone back then. So it's possible that when they became more pervasive, we might find out something different. Well, guess what? They're really pervasive. Almost everyone has a cell phone. More than 50% of the world has a cell phone. And in a lot of economies, uh, it gets close to 90% of people have cell phones. So the World Health Organization has commissioned a study of findings over the past 28 years and published the results in the journal Environment International. The review relied, uh, the re they looked at 5,000 different studies to see which ones were relevant. They found 63 studies that were relevant to this issue. Uh, they were published between 1994 and 2022, and the review found no association between mobile phone use and brain, head, or neck cancer. There was no association in people who used mobile phones for 10 years or more. They looked specifically at that and no association with increased frequency of use. Uh, they looked at like, oh, maybe there was something if people used it a lot, didn't see anything. Uh, turns out when you look at 28 years of research that has been peer reviewed, uh, you look at increased usage, you look at increased penetration of usage amongst the populace, you don't find any correlation between brain cancer incidence and use of the mobile phone. People who didn't use the phone got cancer just as often as people who, often as people who did. Yeah, so there are definitely go going to be the people who say, well, you just haven't studied it long enough. You know, this is all going to happen <laughs> in the next How long would you like? Years. Yeah. <laughs> so, there, so there's that. Um, at the same time, I mean, this is promising. I, I, I don't know. I mean, I was one of those people who was sort of like, well, you know, modern life. What are you going to do? You know, we'll all see in a few years, you know, if we all die of brain cancer because of this. Um, clearly, that the correlation is not there. That's positive. At the same time, I feel like, you know, how often am I holding my phone to my head? I mean, I, I do that. That's a good throughout. point. Yeah. During during a day, like, you know, somebody calls me and I don't have my, you know, um, earbuds handy or, you know, whatever. Um, that happens. But more often than not, it's in my pocket or in, you know, like a crossbody bag, you know, that's that's more or less, you know, around my waist. So uh, I, you know, I don't want to be a conspiracy theorist because I think we, we're, we've got plenty of those about this. I remain cautious, cautiously optimistic that we're, we're okay. Uh, yeah. You know, we're, we're, we're okay because that's what the data tells us. The, the, I, you're, you're absolutely right. Like, even if I'm not using headphones, I'm probably on speakerphone. Uh, how many people do you see these days? I see it more and more in more and more places. People talking on their phone, holding it in front of them, you know, because yes. they're using FaceTime yes. or a video call or something like that. And they're on speaker yeah. or they have headphones in and they're doing that, too. But even if you don't have the headphones, a lot of people still don't hold it to their head anymore. I don't think either one of us are saying, and therefore, maybe it does cause cancer. It's more like, well, we've solved it. It doesn't cause brain cancer when you hold it to your head, just in time for people to stop ever holding a cell phone to their head, and you wouldn't have right. to worry about it anyway, I guess. I guess that's yeah. the other thing to acknowledge is this study doesn't talk about keeping it in your pocket or anything like that. And I mean, I think for a lot of us, I mean, you know, we talk about wrist cancer, you know, because I never take uh -huh. my Apple watch off type thing. And, you know, that is talking to my phone. Um, you know, there's there's pardon me. There's something going on outside. My oh, don't worry right about now. it. Yeah, um, you're only. Yeah, it's fine. Keep going. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, I, I, I don't. I don't know. I, I think that th this kind of stuff is very promising. If you're going to be worried about it, you're going to be worried about it anyway. And I don't think that's a bad thing. It's it's good to, you know, not want radiation to affect you in negative ways. And nobody wants brain cancer. Nobody wants leg cancer. Nobody wants any yeah. kind of cancer. Uh, so, so, you know, all we can do is either study this ourselves or believe the people who uh, take the time to conduct these studies and say, OK, here we are. Yeah, these, these are pretty reliable studies. Uh, again, nothing is certain if you if you just don't want to believe anything. But 
personally, I, I put a, I, I have looked into how this was conducted and I'm like, this is going to get you closer to the truth than a lot of other things. Uh, and granted, yes, there's still some questions about like, you know, are there effects on fertility of keeping these in, in your pocket? And we need some studies on that. So far, there hasn't been a whole lot of evidence about that. There's been a little bit, though. There was a little bit of evidence that, like, oh, maybe there is a correlation to brain cancer. And the number of studies that were done washed that out to where, like, oh, no, that that didn't end up being something that held up under more data. Uh, same thing might happen with holding it in your pocket, or it may not. The thing to remember is we talk about cell phones having radiation because they have radio transmissions. Uh it's when we say radiation, I think a lot of people think nuclear radiation as if the phone, you know, were a tiny little nuclear reactor in your pocket. And that can't be good. Uh, it's right. like if you wear a tinfoil hat, you'll yeah. somehow keep it away. It's radiation in the sense that the sun is also radiation or an AM radio broadcast is radiation. Uh, and I don't say that to minimize uh, radi radio waves at high enough frequencies and intensities can cause damage. That's absolutely true. But it's a very high amount. Uh, and, and that's why you're, you know, not allowed to put your head against the radio transmitter for the 10,000 watt station in, in your neighborhood. Uh, but your phone is operating at much lower frequencies than that. Uh, and it seems like the safety limits we have are good, at least for brain cancer. Hopefully that's true for other areas of the body as well. All right. Indeed. Shall we check the mailbag? We shall. Uh, David wrote us on Patreon in response to our uh, remarkable version of Amazon's assistant with Molly Wood on Friday. David says, I'm the host of the Echo Tips podcast and spent an inordinate amount of time working and demoing a features as such over the past 300 plus episodes. I think many have shared the negative thoughts about paying for something that, that is above and beyond what we get already. But I feel that's because their judgment is coming from a place where they've seen limited functionality for so long. I was skeptical, but then I was in the AI beta for several weeks, if not months. It's strange, but your dialogue gets much more natural and fluid and less uh, off one off of, hey, a lady, do this. So when you go back to her old limited functionality, it's a bit jarring. I wouldn't have thought it was, but it is. That is great. That is exactly what we asked for. Uh, thank you, David, uh, which is like, hey, maybe this stuff is better than you think, but we haven't tried it. If anyone's tried it, let us know. And David was like, I've tried it. Uh, I've tried so, it. Yeah. yeah. Does this uh, does this sway you at all, Sarah? Yeah, maybe, maybe. I still don't want to pay. I want it to be part of my Prime subscription. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because me too. I just don't have five dollars to spare. But um, sure. but no, if it, I I do have five dollars to spare if it's that great. So, but you'd rather you just not. See. <laughs> you'd ra I would, of you'd course, ra I'd rather, rather not, not spare yeah. it. If you don't I don't want to pay yeah. for my dinner either. But you know, yeah, for sure, <laughs> we all got to eat. Yeah, but maybe it maybe it is worth five dollars, or, or and we don't know if it's going to be five dollars, ten dollars, or whatever. That's just what the right. what the information is now. Amazon probably hasn't even totally decided on on what they're going to charge if they're going to charge. So, uh, I would hope they improve base free Alexa enough that people go, "Ooh, you mean it gets better if I pay five dollars?" That's a better way of doing it than just being like, "Yeah, you're stuck on the old broken one unless you fork over," because then people just change I mean, products to something else. I think. I feel like if if Prime, you know, and I'm not saying I want this, but if my Prime got hiked up ten bucks a year for you know better Alexa, good to go. But if I have to do that separately, somehow in my mind, I'm like. <sighs> You're nickel and diming me, yeah. Amazon. Right. So, yeah, it's different yeah. than like, we improved your stuff. If you want even more improvements you can pay, that's up to you than versus like, you're stuck with a broken car unless you pay. It just feels different somehow. Well, um, whether or not you have smart devices in your house, you might be an Android folk. And Android folks need Android faithful. Every week, Android aficionados Ron Richards, Huentui Dao, Michelle Ramon, and Jason Howell bring you the latest Android news and information. It's a great show. You can watch it live Tuesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern. That's 5 p.m. Pacific at youtube.com slash daily tech news show. And subscribe to their feed at androidfaithful.com. 
Patrons, stick around for the extended show. Uh, my power came back halfway through Daily Tech News Show. You may have seen lights come on behind me uh, if you're watching the video. I'm going to talk about what I did to, to be able to do the show with the power out. Uh, I'm going to talk maybe a little bit about my flume water meter. Maybe we'll save that for tomorrow. Uh, but we're also going to play Guess the AI. Can you guess which response was written by a human and which by a machine? Stick around. <laughs> Today is one of the weirder days we've had in recent history. Uh, but just a reminder, we do the show, uh, you know, day or night, power or not. You can catch it live Monday through Friday at 4 p.m. Eastern, 2000 UTC. Find out more at dailytechnewsshow.com slash live. And we're back tomorrow doing it all again with Scott Johnson joining us. The DTNS family of podcasts, helping each other understand. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>